Tumblr, just play it. This game is really interesting and also really long. There are a lot of interesting skips here and there. Some of them are quite obvious, some of them are much more interesting and unintended. If you're lucky, I get the first one right at the end of this area. The problem is that it's completely random. I have absolutely no control over it. And it's mainly a game maker bug, so it's not even something we can manipulate for. The first skip is here, we just do a frame a frame perfect jump right there to skip half of the room. And we can do this no, never mind. Let's not do this one. This is an hyper skip, but it's just not worth it in the marathon. You wouldn't really need the, to go to the right of the side of the room. So Let's see. Anyway, this is mainly a trap game. So we'll see a lot of those. And luckily, the skip didn't work. We can just walk through this wall right here, sometimes. And sometimes we cannot, it's solid. Anyway, here is the first boss. It's a really original apple. And it's really easy. Anyway, we are running on easy version of the game, which is severely, severely nerfed compared to the normal version. Anyway, the first boss is not an issue. Everything is pretty standard. Here, on normal version, there is a trap that will kill you after you have defeated the boss before reaching this side. And it's really, really... How can I say it? <laughs> Not a good feeling when you die to it, especially if the boss takes you a lot of time. Also, you can die during the drop immediately after the boss. Because if you touch the ground before touching the water, you will just explode in a, ba in a bloodbath. And it begins. Anyway, yeah. The world record for this game, I think it's currently... Just below 59 minutes. And no one runs them. O only one person ran the normal version of the game, because it's just much harder and features basically the same compact. Just with more traps and more difficult needle. So we see now we are going to a beach area, which is almost over. And we are heading through the cave. Also, unlike many other fun games, this one has a story. We are kind of a demon. We just woke up. We have no memories at all. And this little blue thing, which is following me, asked me to help her. Her name is Nina, and she is an elf. She is not a fairy. I was told, she's an elf. So, we have nothing better to do, so we are just gonna help her. So, let's skip the part of the room here. By doing some precise movement. Anyway, the story, yeah. We know nothing. If you paid attention, you might have seen a kid then, after the apple boss. And a gate, we just uh, couldn't go through there. We had to go all the way around through the jungle. 
and now we will see the kid again. The other kid again at the end of uh, this area. Yes, the na her name is Nina. Unbelievable, isn't it? I strongly love every fun game. There's a story, storyline. Anyway, you can also see that Carnival made enormous progress as a maker. This game was made, I think, at the end of 2013. I'm not sure. The, la the latest update is uh, in November 2013. You can see the quality improved a lot, the textures are much better. Also the gameplay see, feels more smooth in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Oops. Nice chart right there. And the only downside is that we still have the restarting music. But that is just a carnival thing. He loves his uh, restarting music. And the only stage where he doesn't use restarting music is the last one. And that goes for more of his games, like Destination, for example. Also, there is a lot of dialogue in this game. You will just not see it because I'm window capturing. But every time I stand still doing nothing, it's because I have to go through some dialogue. Or cutscenes. And the dialogue is in Japanese, so if you play it on your PC and you don't have uh, the Japanese language, you don't have a Japanese operating system, by default we will not have the Japanese language and you will just see some moon rules. Anyway, Carnival also may took down the download of all of his uh, previous games. I think mainly because he wants people just to play his latest game, which is Scribble, which is absolutely fantastic and a fantastic adventure game in my opinion. Arguably one of the best games of 2016. I think the game was shown on the previous Fungi Marathon by Fraslo, but I'm not sure. This time. It was not featured. Anyway, you can see here that uh, I'm not uh, taking any saves. That's because after the cave collapsed, you could see the cave collapsing in the previous uh, cutscene, we lost our gun and we have to find it now. We just can save if we can shoot the saves. And we saw also the kid in a cage. He was apparently captured by the demons. We now know Nina asked to ask us to help her because the demons destroyed her half village and now she is uh, she has nothing left, no one left alive. And since we have nothing better to do, we are helping her. Anyway, now we have to backtrack, backtrack all the way to the first room again and save the kid. Oh, and the kid in the cage was captured by the demons as well. Don't ask me to justify the plot of the story too much, guys. I I'm just speedrunning the game. It's a, it's a pretty good plot, overall, considering the average in fun games. Alright, so we are in the preview, in the first room again, the kid is gone. Oops, that is uh, a bit uh, embarrassing. So, we just go in the top left. So this kid right here, you can tell he's evil, he's evil because uh, he's purple, and he's mainly shooting at us. In the cutscenes, in the cutscene before the fight, 
he's actually mocking us and telling us that uh, he left plenty of saves in the castle to make our life easier. Last we did not have a gun, so he's just mocking us. It's kind of a dick. But it's no problem because we are shooting them, shooting him down. He has a set of four different attacks that he can choose randomly. This is probably the worst one. The one from the top is really easy to dodge, and so is the other gravity attack, but anyway, it's really easy. So we are now here in a volca volcano, it seems, because that's um, where demons build their fortresses under a volcano. And this is probably where the game gets a bit harder. There, is, there are a few hard uh, triggers and uh, more precise middle, and also one of the most difficult jumps in the game later on. We are just here to get a nice platform cycle. So these apples align perfectly. There we go. Also, in normal mode, you can skip some stuff because uh, the stage is evenly nerfed. So I grab anything I can get to go faster. Also, I will skip a few saves now and then. Because it's just not worth grabbing some of those. And the middle is so easy. I would say this game, easy version of this game, is kind of see the moon level in terms of difficulty. Except uh, some of the latest boss. The, late, the last three bosses are actually. A bit hard for a beginner, I would say. But if you feel confident enough, you could try the easy version of this game. I wouldn't recommend it to an absolute beginner. But if you feel confident, go for it. The blue thing is, a f is an elf following us. We are trying to help her. After the demon king destroyed her village. Oh, so we are skipping three saves here. Because it's just, they are not on the way. It takes way too long to grab them. And the segment is just that easy. There we go. Also, the reason why, if you are not a beginner, the reason why you want to play easy mode over hard mode is because um, the last boss is really hard. Also, nice plane jump there. I got that really quickly. And yeah. So here is the, probably the hardest jump in the game, at the top. It's so hard for me to get it. I don't think I got this really often first try. Luckily, I did that right now, so that's really nice. We are in a good place, even though I'm dying here and there randomly on really easy jumps. Oops, like that one. Insane plane. Also, Super F coming up on the next save. Luckily, it's right at the beginning, so it's totally worth doing. There we go. And that they could get the hard jumps really so quickly. And we are going through this lab for whatever reason. Also, you could see at the beginning of this area that uh, the bridge that got destroyed right after the first bus. The detour took us some time, and there is no way to skip that. Anyway, we are riding out of the castle, of the, this weird lab. 
right now to go into our snowy area, which will lead to the best boss in the game. And you will see why it's the best boss in the game. It used to be the worst boss in the game, but, not, but now it's the best. Shout out to Hido, who gave up on that boss up until recently. Mainly because he couldn't bear it. So yeah, this area has uh, some bouncing snowballs. And it's heavily cycle based, so I'm sorry you will not uh, you will not uh, get to listen to the whole song, which is a shame. It's one of the best songs in the game, in my opinion. So this is probably the worst side in the game. If you are not, uh, if you couldn't. Uh, save reset right there to get a nice cycle. The best part about this save is that in the very hard mode, that is the very end of the, of the segment. You will see, you might have seen that uh, on the difficulty select screen there are four difficulties. The different difficulties just remove, remove uh, a different amount of saves throughout the game. I'm currently going through very hard mode in the normal version of the game. And this was one of the worst saves, because that part with uh, a mess of snowballs was at the end of the segment, so I had to learn that again. It took me, I wanna say, a good 30 minutes to relearn that save from zero and without uh, resetting to get a good cycle. Also, this room is completely RNG, the snow can just screw you from the top. I'm getting some unlucky pattern. Okay. And now here's the best boss. It takes a lot of time and it's really boring, so we are just gonna skip it. Unluckily, Carnival forgot to put the real blocks on the right side of the room, so you can just walk right and skip it completely. It's really nice for speedruns, because that boss takes two minutes if you are lucky and get a fast cycle. But why bother taking a fast cycle when you can just skip it completely? Anyway, here, this is an house. This is the old house of the kid. And we are going in this because according to the lore, outside it's just cold. And we don't want to have it cold. So we got in here. I don't think I got the last to save. <laughs> Too bad. To go there. Too bad, I didn't need it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. That was my reaction when I first discovered it. When I started speedrunning this game, I went through to... Do... To check for glitches everywhere. And that's probably the best thing. I couldn't stop laughing when I found that. It's just amazing. So, we are now in this weird, uh, spooky techno area. If it, it's a nightclub. It's actually what happens when the lights switch off or go down for some reason. That's literally the, ro the lore of the game. We are here because the light went off. Let's do a weird, a nice frame perfect skip here, which is basically a double diamond. All right, you can fade that 50, 15 times, and it's still one. But you just skip the whole room. Spooky techno area is really spooky. Also, size or warning, I should have said that before entering the area. But yeah, size or warning, don't watch it. <laughs> if you feel sick. 
it will be gone in uh, just the screens anyway. Well, three. The boss is flashing as well. Oops. Right. Overall, this is going really well. I usually die a lot more on silly things on uh, the way throughout the run, but this is alright. And we are on a really good pace. And then some nice trees in the background with uh, a big, uh, big apple, probably the biggest apple in the game. A really well drawn apple, if I say so. And these are all carnivals drawing, he really likes uh, his paint, MS paint art. So the, here is the boss. He is known as the destination guy. Even though this guy was used in at least seven games before Destination, everyone knows him as the Destination guy. Yeah, the previous room spells Aya ah, yeah, for whatever reason. Only Carnival knows why. So this boss is pretty straightforward, you shoot him. And the red thing follows you, you have to avoid it. And now we have to shoot the blue square following us to redirect our bullets upward and shoot the boss itself. Every attack is pretty easy to dodge, even on uh, hard mode of the game, it's not an issue. The density is much higher, but uh, the, attackers, the attacks are just so slow. I usually die here, because I try to go much faster in speedruns. And that's usually a shame. I always die, at least on this boss, because I try to go for a really fast cycle. So. He will find a fallen angel, his name is Lucas. He's going around defeating demons. We will see him later. Anyway, to leave the arrows, we had to go through the, the sewers. Because. because reasons, I guess. Also, this game for me is really laggy because my CPU is not the best. And uh, every stage is just a really big room. So... I get uh, some stuff, some lag starters every now and then. And that could be really... Really sad if I am about to do a hard jump. It requires just a little bit uh, of precision. Also, in this room, there is an invisible save, for absolutely no reason, right here, I think. Or here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, because it's the same bag of uh, the wall in the first stage. Shout out to Lars for dying on this really super easy segment during uh, the old uh, races that people and uh, discovering that there is actually an invisible side in that room. Oops. And shout out for Tandy for telling me that I actually managed to die on that save myself during runs. Also, traps everywhere, as usual in carnival games. Some of them are really stupid, some of them are really interesting. Alright, 
so we left the sewers. We are in this little happy area. Oops, I might have missed the cycle here. Yeah, I definitely missed that cycle. I hope you do this again. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, sorry, I had a uh, bit help there. My, my mind was completely blank. I, blank. I couldn't remember how to do this fast. Alright. So, trap traveler. This one is probably one of the hardest saving, very hard mode. All the music in this game is great, I agree, but uh, the problem is that it's restarting. If you want, if you want, piece of cheese made a mod of the game, I think. I think it's him. Where the music does not restart and the tie sets are all changed into something more high quality. As you can see, Carnival steals, still loves. He's all the guy, the foil, the tie sets. Oh, we almost reached the end of the summit, that's good, it means I didn't die a lot in the last seconds. So this is a castle, the door is shut, we have to go in the underground, because we will find a button that will lift up the gate and allow us to access the castle where we will find a nice weapon that we will use to defeat the demons later on in the run. So, we are about halfway through the game in terms of stages, but the later stages are longer and take a bit more time. After the next boss we should be about halfway through. Also I'm sorry I have to reset so we will not get to listen to the whole songs. To the whole song. Oh no, I forgot. <laughs> Traps everywhere. Like I said. Oops, oops, okay. The snow stage, in my opinion, is one of the best new songs in the game. The best one is definitely the, the last one, though. Directly from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Explorer of Time and Darkness, I think. And Sky. We are almost through the cave. One more screen after this one. Also, this has a one, another one. With the first trigger, where every spike flies at you. That, that takes a bit of time to understand, especially in, her, in the normal mode of the game. That adds some additional spike and makes everything much more complex. Anyway, here we are. There is our button. Yeah, if you want to listen to the entirety of the song, go and ask around for the high texture mod. I think it, that does not have a restart, restarting music. Anyway, here we are, we are in the castle. This is probably the most laggy area of the game for me, so let's cross our fingers and hope I do not die too much. Hey Alex! What's up, dude? Alright. Grab that, thank you. Alright, alright. Uh, for a second, I didn't remember which one of those blocks was real and which one is fake. Two of those blocks down there 
are fake. <laughs> they just uh, take a wild bet <laughs> which one to land. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't run this game in three days. I am forgetting this stuff. <laughs> area, the timings for cycles are terrible if you reset. You want to stay alive in this area. It's the exact opposite of uh, some of the previous stages. Oh yeah, you, I don't do that. That is way too risky. It's better to wait in between the fire here. So yeah, you can be productive during a fun. I work on my fun games during a fun. It's really inspiring. Anyway, here, this is the weapon that uh, Nina wants us to use against uh, the demons. But Lucas is here, he's an angel, he's also kind of an asshole because he skipped the whole castle by going through the roof. And he steals the element of justice, that's what the weapon is called because he thinks he can use it better than us. We will meet him later, in two more stages. Anyway, this is the defense system of the castle. You have to shoot the numbers twice, and you have to do that there. In within the time limit that you can see at the top. The problem is that uh, this can give you really unlucky patterns. Okay. If uh, one of the numbers, like this one right here, keep shooting, you can't just go on that side and expect to be safe. So I will have to play it a bit risky here, because the time is running out and I'm a bit concerned. Alright, it wasn't too bad. So everything blows up, because that's what happens when you destroy the dam. primary defense system. The castle self extract itself. And we get blown out. And we are here. We don't know what this place is. We are. We ask Nina what this place is. She doesn't want to talk to us. And she stick to us right now. So we have to read this nice sign. And go back all the way to the left. To go down. We can't go up and right. Because the way is closed. This place is actually the destroyed half village where Nina used to live. Now it's just uh, it's nothing but ruins. Really sad. Also, night transition, three black screens, and we are here. This is one of my favorite areas, gameplay-wise. It's really fun. When you know the traps, of course. The first time it's always a pain to go through everything. Anyway, if I am fast enough, I can sketch a platform here. By doing a this jump of fate, the platform aligns perfectly if you reset to size before. Uh, that apple is in a weird position. I hope I can do this. Also, dying in this spot, on this side is terrible, because if I do, all the apples will respawn 
and I have to trigger. Ah, that's bad. <laughs> and I have to trigger everything again. Alright. Second try. That's a shame. I usually don't die there anymore in Rams. But what can you do? Alright. Also, I think there is a playlist somewhere. A YouTube playlist with all the songs in the game, but I'm not sure. I think there is somewhere in on the forums. If you're curious, you can go and look for that. And if there isn't, someone should make it. Oh, so this room is... You can skip half of this room because Carnival removed a little too many spikes in here. So you can just do that jump. So this... Powerful fireballs are completely RNG. Luckily, I was... Uh, they were kind to me. And I did the first try. That usually takes a bit of time. Also, I almost forgot the trap right there. I saved it at the last second. Another really interesting skip coming out. You're supposed to go right here. But you can just abuse the trigger position and skip that completely. There is uh, a rather long chase segment with Spike that takes like, I don't know, 20 seconds. But we don't have time to for that. We have to go fast. So, we are now in hell. This is all. We are gonna skip half of it with a frame per jump. Half a with a jump cancel here. Nice, nice, I got it first try. That's really, really, really important. That's probably the hardest jump in the game. Oops. That saves, I wanna say, two minutes. Oh, so you heard me pause the game there for a second, you heard the ding. Because uh, you use pause to... You use pause to make possible to hold down your shift. The people who know how jump cancelling works will understand. And if you don't know how jump cancelling works, don't worry. You can one frame that if you feel like if you feel like it. Alright. This was all. There is one last save left. You can see a nice moon there. I wonder why it's there. Ah, please grab the save. I need that. Well, actually I don't need that, but it would be... But, ah, yeah, I needed that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> So the moon comes down, this is really reminiscent of the original guy. And now we have a rather long chase segment, which is really really nice compared to normal version. I shouldn't really die there. Watch me die to the last jump. No, I didn't die to the last jump. Hooray. It's the moon from hell. Hell has his own moon, has its own moon. Uh, Aztec, an underground moon, and here we are. This is Lucas. He tells us that the demon has defeated him, and this is the demon. It's the best uh, fight in the game because the length is completely random. There are two hands. Each end has 7 HPs, I think. 
each enemy can choose from a set of four different attacks, and you can damage the end only with, only when he, he chooses two attacks out of four. So this fight, in theory, could go on forever. Of course, since this is reality, I am bound to beat the boss within a finite amount of time. Also, the deal about this boss is that uh, if you kill the end, one hand, and you don't kill the other, the end which at zero HP will respawn, and I have to kill the end on the right side of the screen first. Because if I kill the left one, it will respawn almost immediately. Also, this is really unpolite of him. He's giving me the hand, the hand I don't wanna kill first. Over and over again. This is this is one this guy is mocking me so hard right now. Look at this. Look, he 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 used his uh, other hand, wrong hand, like seven times in a row. I, I have no words for how how much of a troll this guy is. Also, I can't even read the chat during this. Because if you die here, the run is dead. The real speed run is dead. Also, if you kill the hand on the right side of the screen first, and the right one does not come back, the left one does not come down, after 30 seconds, that one will respawn as well. And it happened once that I had to... Oh, I missed the end. Okay, now we have to really pray a lot for the last uh, standing hand to come down with enough reasonable amount of time, and he's dead. Alright. Fun fact about this boss. The boss can kill you after you defeated and killed both ends. Because sometimes the bullets will not despawn and they will stay on screen. And after you kill both ends, you get frozen. So you can, you can just uh, die after killing the boss. Just like in Crimson Final Boss. Shout out to Shadow Link 57. Also known as Kuso 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 nowadays. For dying to Crimson Final Boss. During a speedrun after killing him. Anyway. At the end, you could see him. You could see Lucas sacrificing himself to kill the demon in a heroic act and giving us the possibility to continue our adventure. Also. If I don't die here for like three screens in a row, a trigger will just not exist. Because the variable that uh, controls the trigger is set on the moon chase. And if I don't reset, uh, the trigger will just not exist. I don't remember if I reset on the demon or not. So let's see. Yeah. Usually there is a trap here. There is a wall of four spikes going going right, but I was lucky to stay alive. So I get to skip that. Anyway, we are in uh, another demon fortress right now where the demon king used to live. And we're just going. We are planning to go in the throne room. Oops, oops, oh, okay, okay. That was close. <laughs> I did a really low first jump and uh, I didn't feel like going through the gate. And the time was running out. So. We get here. We grab that red key. I don't like this room, so I will skip this room as well, which I skipped similar to the skip in the jungle in the first part of the run. 
we will save again because this is a marathon and I don't wanna die. And we are going. You can't go. We can't go right, right away. It seems like you can just walk. Uh, Oh no, okay, good thing I saved. In this room, right here, you can just uh, walk right uh, right away, because the way is blocked by the fence system. So we are going in a lower level of the castle to switch off the defense system of uh, the fortress. Or that is what uh, we think we're doing. We have uh, some automatic turrets right here. They are part of the defense system. Once we switch it off, we have to go back through these rooms, and the ops and the turrets will not uh, shoot at all. Alright, alright. Also, these two rats can shoot off screen. And that I. Once I die to these guys right here on the transition jump. Because I couldn't see. And I didn't know at the time that uh, you could die on the transition jump. So. We kill. We destroy this thing. Which is basically the core of the defense system. As you can see, the turrets are not shooting anymore. And we can safely go all the way back. Where well, from where we came from. Here we go. Oh, yeah, you died there. <laughs> you have to stop the. Uh, for like three frames, if you don't want to die today. So here we have a really stupid trap that I sometimes forget. I hope I don't forget it now. Hopefully, I'm not. I will not, since I'm talking about it right now. This one is just silly. Those two spikes going up. Oh, and I died today. Okay, you get to see it again. <laughs> It's like a, one of the old carnival traps that does not make any sense and does not add to the game. If you wanna see good traps, actually, you should play Scribble. He's like this game. Again, in my opinion, one of the best games of 2016. Right. So, unluckily, we just destroyed part of the defense system. These turrets right here still work. And this is the only avoidance of the game. Full blown avoidance. This fight is also much harder in normal mode. Everything is more dense and there are. I think it's all, the bullets are also faster, but I'm not sure. So I will have to focus for a bit, because dying to this is... Um, step number one. Number one. Embarrassing and, and step and number two, really time consuming. The avoidance I think is about three minutes long. But it shouldn't be an issue. Also this boss is featured in culture too. It's one of the optional boss rush bosses. 
I was really happy when we saw that because I already played this several times, so it was not a problem for me. Right. So we are going to the right side of the screen now, so we can leave the room faster. It's a bit weird to dodge stuff on the right side. Everyone who plays avoidance can confirm this. Unluckily, this this wall exists. Unlike uh, other, uh, oh, okay, this was close. Unlike uh, some other room bosses, some other bosses room. So I yeah, to get to sit through that every single time. So we discovered that the Demon King is gone. And we are going to take this lift to the Evans. Maybe. If you can read Japanese, you can explain me the story a bit better. But from what I was told, the game now tells us that we are going there, where the Demon King currently resides to defeat him. Luckily, the last sage is not really hard compared to normal version. It's really a walk in the park. And you will see a lot of screens from medleys. Like, a lot of screens for medleys. No. I think for medleys uh, uses uh, for famous medley uses uh, justice and three of them takes screens from uh, take screens uh, from the last stage because it's just so epic. Chibi Misha currently currently there. Carnival took down the download for the game, for his old games, but he gave us permission to distribute them again if someone asks for them. So you just have to ask around, there are plenty of people who will be willing to give you a download link. And if you want to play normal version, you can also download the bingo games folder, because just this normal version is in there. So yeah, epic stage. With epic music. We have to go through four different colored areas of a needle, basically. Some of them are just needle, like this one and the last one. Some of them are based on conveyor belts, and one is about platforms and cycle. Yeah, the music really pumps you up. Makes you feel like you're on epic quest. And in fact you are, if you understand Japanese and read the dialogue. It's a shame the game did not get translated. This is the area with platforms, maybe I can grab... no, I can't. Oh, okay, maybe I can grab that one again, no. Ah, no, I'm too slow. Oh, I did not reset. I forgot to reset. Usually you wanna reset on this side to get a good cycle on this platform. Right? 
rainy time, rainy days. I will do a run of just this normal mode when I get my new PC, don't worry. And I don't get any lag. Plus, there is really no reason to show normal mode on a marathon when the easy mode features the same content and it's just faster in general. Okay. Plus, if beginners want to play this game, they should they should go for easy mode. So it's better to show off that they might be, be get uh, a bit concerned if uh, they see normal mode without seeing uh, how easy more easy mode plays. All right. Okay. Okay, it's really important to grab that platform. You reset on the previous save, not this one, because you're resetting on this on the save where on the save that contains the platform makes thing makes things a lot slower. I don't know how Carnival timed that, but he did a poor job there. I like in the rest of the game. And look! What is the screen? Has anyone seen this screen, this screen before? Also, the last red screen was featured in Cultured One with the inference that um, it was colored blue in Cultured One. Hey look, another really famous screen. Yeah, K3 screens are completely free here. As you can see, there are a lot of spikes missing. And this is the best screen, this is the screen taken in the extra, which is just absurd. Shout out to Rapidor here, that is a full spike, and it is a conveyor. I know Rapidor loves that spike. And here we are. Another cutscene, Nina is following us, and she drops the element of justice, remember the weapon we have to use to defeat the demons, and we fall in a trap. We are now separated from Nina, and we have to go on, on our own, but don't worry, she will come back. Just in time for the final boss. And shout out to the Apple kids here. I think this is a screen used in one of the most infamous fun games ever. The Impossible Medley. And this is the last platforming screen. Definitely the hardest thing in the game, platforming wise, in normal version. Oops, as you can see. And it lags like hell for me. That was really scary. And we are heading to 
the final boss. It has three different phases. In easy version, we get the sides between phases. In normal mode, we don't. So here is Nina again. There is a cutscene before the boss fight. This is the Demon King. He reveals us that uh, he is not the one who destroyed uh, Nina's village. It was us who destroyed the village. And we just lost memory. And we are now... Now we are commit... Okay. Now we are committed to helping Nina. So we have to go... Endeavor... And make justice... On the Demon King. For ordering the... Destruction of... Uh, the Earth Village. Again, like... Uh, most of the other bosses. This guy has four different attacks he can choose from, and it's completely random. I can lose DPS on some of them. Alright, alright. First phase done. Almost over. The second phase is definitely the hardest, in my opinion. Especially if you play normal mode, this might take you a while. You can choose four different attacks as well. This is the best one because we get a lot of uh, dead time after we pull him, pull his health down to two thirds. He goes in a little enrage phase. We do the same thing again when he is at the one third HP. This is the worst attack. Oh, okay. I miscounted. Let's do that again. Ah, okay. That was uh, really unfair. You don't wanna see... You don't wanna see orange first because you lose a lot of DPS during that. On every other attack. You can pretty much shoot him all the time. Where it's just impossible to shoot him during one. Not really Benzen, I'm sorry. And yeah. This is where several of my units died. I'm dying to the second phase. Also, this Magenta attack, I said that is the best one. That is, if you get a good RNG. I couldn't even get on top of this platform right here. Don't give me orange, okay? And you get to see every single attack. Yellow seems really scary, but it's not that scary. Okay. Yellow can also wall you, but that is one of the rarest thing ever. During the period where I speed around this game, I got walled by yellow only one time. And I wanna say I spent a good deal, 40 hours on the game, practicing. Alright, alright. And then we have the last phase. We don't have enough power to defeat the Demon King, so Nina uses the element of justice. Sacrificing herself to damage the Demon King. So now we can actually beat him. Oops. Okay. You can damage this boss here during the death attack before speedrunners just used to stay on the low ground and go from the left, to, from the right to the left. You shouldn't really die to this, I'm still a bit. I mean, I still die to this every now and then because I'm bad. 
and they can't get the pattern right. Oh no, okay, that's unfortunate. The last turn rage. Oh, no, 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 okay. I, I can't do the pattern right, I'm sorry. The last turn rage part is also really easy. If you play safe, you should not rely to it. And again, that I think will me one time. Although I don't even remember how many rooms. Yeah. You know, I don't remember all the story, so I made some parts up. I hope you don't mind. Oh no. I'm always too eager to do damage here. So I start the pattern. The aim attack in a weird position. Every now and then. Please go in your rage phase. Thank you. And now, please don't be a bully and warn me. Time is coming up. Unless I die, that is. Time. And the game is over. We defeated the Demon, Demon King. We help Nina. Even though she's dead, and now we have only one thing to do, because we destroyed the elf castle, elf village, following the order of the demon king. So at the end, we just throw ourselves out of the castle and kill ourselves in a final act of justice. And the story is over. And the credits roll. How did that go? I don't think that was too bad. One o seven. One o seven is fine. It's not the best. World record is like eight minutes faster, but it's okay for a marathon run. I cry every time. I see the ending. That's why I reset before seeing the ending. And at the end of the sag credits we will see... Let's say a heartwarming screen. Oh yeah, and if you know Japanese, you can see the songs here. I have actually no clue what anything, what any of this means. Also, little fun thing, you can see here the boss tokens that you get after you defeat the boss. After the run I will go on the sc save select screen, you will see that the, the third boss is just missing. But the game gives you the clear anyway, because it doesn't do any check on whether or not you actually defeated the boss, the bosses or not.
Yeah, if you want more info, ask Abluka. He's the one who took the time to translate everything and told me the story. I don't think I remembered everything correctly. I did the best I could. That was Justice. In the last screen we can see us and Nina in her human form in the afterlife. So that's it. That was Justice for all of you. And as you can see, the boss token is missing. So, Kraka, help me out. Oh, okay. Uh, well, your segment is, like, right after this one, so we're just gonna, uh, do, like, a fast transition. Are you, uh, I mean, you, all you have to do is just change games on your end, right? Okay. I'll do that right now. So, thanks, Snowguard, for the awesome, uh, I wanna be the Justice Easy Run. Great run, dude. It looked fantastic, and that story was absolutely compelling. I was trying to hold back my tears so badly at the very end there. <laughs> it's so as a we a well written story for a fun game, considering fun <laughs> games do not have a story in general. So good. I, I wasn't even expecting that. <laughs> so as we uh, shove No Guard out here, we'll bring No Guard back in again for his a little avoidance showcase here. So. Uh, you guys can just stick around for a hot second, or you'll probably maybe see a little transition here. And uh, no guard, you can go ahead and open the other game. Oh, I already did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, you're already there. Well, okay. Uh, just um, all right. We'll just make this transition like buttery smooth here because it already fits. So let me just uh, uh, uh also, whoops, wrong. Also, shout out to this game for not having a title card. <laughs> It's just a pitch black image. Uh, yep, it's uh, I clicked the wrong thing. Silly me. Whoop. Uh, okay.